Whenever people talk about climate change, the discussion revolves around we and us. However, the we as a united front against climate change cannot happen unless the I, the individual, becomes active. In the next few minutes, I'm going to tell you how I came to this realization and what did I do about this. We all know that climate change is caused by buildup of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases in the Earth's atmosphere. These gases trap heat and warm up the planet. This problem is now going to derail the human civilization. That's what people fear. We also know that we are the cause of this. Our excessive use of fossil fuels, coal and petroleum, is causing this problem. Climate change cannot be reversed now, but it can be slowed down and it can be managed. We have already taken one shot at this through the Kyoto Agreement in the early 2000s. This agreement focused on 37 developed countries who tried to reduce their annual carbon emissions. However, this failed. At the end of 2008, the world was in total chaos. The Kyoto Agreement had failed, and no other solution appeared on the horizon. The world was dithering, the governments were dithering, and all of us who had been following climate change negotiations, we were very much concerned. For me, this concern translated into understanding that my generation and the future generation has to prepare itself for the worst case scenario, which is extreme and catastrophic climate change. This concern led me to design a course and offer it through Symbiosis Center for Liberal Arts. This course was entitled Living with Climate Change. I was hoping to motivate my young students to save humanity. But I soon came across an obstacle. The problem is too big and too complex. Rather than motivating, I was demoralizing the students. And then one day, I had a flash of insight. The main contribution to climate change comes from use of fossil energy by industries and businesses. We all know that. But industries and businesses operate and thrive because their products and services are being purchased by individuals. So it all comes down ultimately to what individuals need, want, and aspire for. So I realized that I should stop talking about global statistics, and I should focus on how the individual is contributing to climate change. A useful concept in this context is carbon footprint. Carbon footprint of an individual is the total greenhouse gas emissions per year caused in sustaining the lifestyle of that individual. This is measured in terms of tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. I started looking up data and realized that across the world, if we want to have any hope of managing climate change in this century, the average per capita carbon footprint of humanity should be not more than two ton carbon dioxide equivalent. But in reality, the average per capita carbon footprint is five ton. So that's a bit of a problem. But think about this a bit. Across the world, there is a wide variety of lifestyles. Some are highly energy intensive. Some do not use any energy. So the per capita average is a useful number, but a person who is living a specific lifestyle cannot really relate with that. So I started looking at data from India. And not surprisingly, as we have developed, our per capita carbon footprint has gone on increasing. In 2009, when I was looking at this data, 
we were already close to the ideal threshold of two tons, but still below it. Now we have already crossed that limit. I started thinking on this, but then even in India, we still have a wide spectrum of lifestyles. On one end of the spectrum, you have a billionaire industrialist living in a multi-storied house right in the heart of Mumbai. At the other end of the spectrum, you have a tribal family living in a one-room mud hut in the deep jungles of Eastern Ghats. But intuitively, you can understand that for a typical urban Indian like you and me, our personal carbon footprint is bound to be more than our national average. But can we really actually measure our carbon footprint? That became a critical question for me. So I started thinking, what is it that is contributing to the carbon footprint of a typical urban Indian? The calculation is relatively easy for the direct electricity and fuels that we use in our day-to-day -day life. It becomes tricky when it comes to the other emissions. And these other emissions are really linked with our lifestyle choices. So what are these other emissions? These are caused by all the indirectly consumed energy that is providing us with all the goods and services that we use for maintaining a certain quality of life. I had to use a lot of estimates and guesstimates to figure out a simple way of calculating these contributing factors. But throughout this exercise, my focus was on using easily available data, even at the cost of accuracy of the final answer. If you go online, you will find that there are many carbon footprint calculators. Even in 2009, there were quite a few. But many of these focus on the American lifestyle. Also, many of these calculators require so much information that most people cannot reach the end of the calculation. I didn't want to get into that trap. So I came up with a calculator which requires only five pieces of information. Your annual electricity-related emissions can be estimated from your electricity bill. Cooking energy emissions can be estimated from your PNG bill or just by knowing how many days an LPG cylinder lasts in your kitchen. Your mobility-related emissions can be estimated from knowing your average running of your vehicle and its fuel economy. The last two factors, area of the house and how the waste is managed in your household, these are the proxies that are used for approximating the other emissions. I have also put in a provision which allows you to add emissions from your air travel. This is a very, very simple calculation and I have kept it all open source. Whoever wants it, I am very happy to share the logic of the calculation, the assumptions used and so on, because I want people to keep using it, build on it, improve, it, improve on it. And people also respond reciprocally by generously sharing their suggestions so that the calculator over the years has gone on improving. In my 2009 Living with Climate Change classroom, I used a very, very basic form of this calculator. And the result was better than what I had expected. My students actually sat up and took notice. They realized that their lifestyle is contributing to the climate change, but they also realized that small changes in their day-to-day -day routine will help bring their carbon footprint below the two-ton threshold, which will make them part of the solution. The conversations in the classroom definitely changed after we did this exercise. So that was a big plus point for me. Initially, this calculator was just a set of equations on a couple of pages. You had to plug in the data in each equation, use a pocket calculator to solve it, and then go on adding numbers. It was a fairly tedious process. The students did it because they were going to get marks for that assignment. 
But when I gave it to my colleagues and family members, they found it rather daunting. So then I converted it into uh, an Excel worksheet. Now you just plug in the data, the calculations happen automatically, and you get the outcome. That has worked very well, both inside and outside the classroom. The Samuchit personal carbon footprint calculator now gives you a ballpark estimate of your total carbon emissions. It also tells you where those emissions are coming from. And that helps you identify areas to work on to reduce your carbon footprint. Around 2010, I designed a half-day workshop around this calculator. Uh, initially, I called this workshop Samuchit Lifestyle Workshop. But then people started turning up wanting to learn yoga and meditation. So that was a bit of a problem. So I changed the name to Samuchit Climate Friendly Lifestyle Workshop. After that, I have focused more on offering these workshops to urban Indians. Several thousand people have used the calculator so far. During this period, the conversations around climate change have also changed dramatically. The bleak despair of 2008 gave way to hope in 2015 with the Paris Agreement. Under the Paris Agreement, majority of the countries have come together and pledged to reduce their contribution to climate change. Of course, the agreement will become active only next year, and there are still a lot of hurdles to cross before agreement translates into action. But we have to realize that the Paris Agreement is humanity's last chance to be able to have some control over climate change in this century. Ideally, all countries in the world need to be contributing to this. In India, we now know that we are one of the major contributors, but we are also one of the countries which are going to be most affected by impacts of climate change. I have become part of a movement trying to raise awareness around it. We have been doing public talks, we are doing workshops, newspaper articles, social media, blog, a variety of things. Slowly, people are waking up. Many individuals and organizations now want to track their carbon emissions. They want to understand how they are contributing to the problem and improve their proactiveness towards the solutions. There is now a sense of urgency across the world. We know that urgent action must be taken in the next 10 to 12 years. Keeping that in mind, we launched the Carbon Footprint Calculator as a web app a few months ago. I hope that with this web app, now it has become accessible to majority of urban Indians out there. In this entire journey, this has sort of become a stepping stone. The whole concept of keeping the calculations simple, even at the cost of accuracy, has now sort of gained ground. It is useful for encouraging action, even at the organization and industry level. I have helped a few organizations to develop uh, simple tools for tracking internally their carbon emissions. I am now working with several colleges in Pune, and we are co-developing tools which will be useful for understanding the carbon emissions from academic campuses. So slowly, the idea has taken root, and it is evolving in variety of directions in a variety of ways. This is my vision for the future. The simple tools that I am developing will be useful for organizations and businesses to internally keep a check on how their carbon emissions are coming. But if they want to do a public disclosure, they will have to do an accurate, detailed calculation. Protocols do exist for that, but implementing those protocols is expensive. As the urgency to solve climate change is increasing, we are going to need a large number of experts capable of doing the detailed carbon accounting and auditing. So those of you who are in their 20s, you can think of this as a career opportunity. 
this whole process became a starting point for me for a much larger agenda of low carbon sustainable urbanization that's the area i have been actively working in especially post 2015 in pune we are trying a number of things several of us have come together and we are trying to trigger a citizens movement for carbon neutral and sustainably smart pune by 2030 if you want to join in this movement you can get in touch with me but there is one thing which all of you can do on your own the average per capita carbon footprint of pune citizens today is around 3 ton carbon dioxide equivalent which means that most of us are contributing to the problem rather than to the solution so it's time that each one of you should do your carbon footprint calculation and take action let's all of us become the low carbon i so that collectively we become the low carbon v first in pune then across india and then finally across the world thank you